As you've heard today, our bold and responsible approach to AI can unlock people's creativity and potential. If you have been using the internet or have not been hiding under a rock for the past few months, you have probably noticed that artificial intelligence, AI, is currently sort of ruling the technology scene. And so this is Google's attempt to use artificial intelligence to augment search results. In this video, we will discuss the implications of Google's SGE for search. When we discuss Google SG and how it impacts search, what exactly are we talking about? Search generative experience is what SGE stands for. The search generative experience basically uses generative AI to interpret the current Google search results and provide you with a curated response that was not written by a human but rather by artificial intelligence based on what humans wrote. How long ago did Google launch this for the general public? And when did you start noticing the Google SGE, if at all? So right now, we are actually piloting the beta. Google has an offering called Google Search Labs. So, if you opt into Google Search Labs, you can test it out. They haven't actually rolled this out to the general public yet. The plan is a December rollout based on what we last heard from Google. And so it's unclear. So we don't know how much of that is actually going to get rolled out to the public. Let us take the what is an estate plan quiz and see what results it returns. Let's take an example. Yeah, definitely. What is estate planning then? Okay, it gives an I answer that is essentially an aggregation of different angles from the top results on Google. And then there's a carousal that has three different sources. Thus, Wikipedia's definition is available for queries like, what is an estate plan? It has law.cornell.edu and then Investopedia. And then there's actually a little button in the top right where you can click and you can see where there's this breakdown of the different angles that the AI is using to piece together a comprehensive definition. For instance, one point of view in this situation is that setting up the transfer of assets beforehand is estate planning. Then there is the additional perspective of estate planning. In other words, from that angle, it is about deciding how to preserve, manage, and distribute a person's assets after death. Each of those angles is supported by a number of sources, and the page goes on. Let us see, there are sources that support each of the roughly seven different angles that are combined into the AI answer. The lesson here is that you might be able to get your website to appear in this free pack in the top right if you can optimize your content to provide a distinctive angle that adds something to the AI response. Okay, yeah, that's a really good insight. So that was actually what we wanted to ask next. So with this SGE format, it sounds like we're now one additional step away from somebody visiting your website if you have good content on your website. If you are attempting to target these top of funnel keywords, how do you, in order for the AI algorithm to include you in its summary, if you will, of sources, you must offer your own viewpoint. And even then, we're still one more click away because they have to click to show the sources. They are currently acting. The first three, the top three sources, show. Yeah, that's right. Interesting, okay. There you go. They will have to connect. And since we do not see the typical user experience as clicking in, that is kind of a hidden thing, right? Yeah, you would normally assume I'm seeing everything we need to see to get an answer. .ilum. So this is in beta, right? This is something you are testing through Google Labs. What do you think the hunch is? In your opinion, how has the public page changed since these features were added? Just be aware that there is a featured snippet that essentially provides the same information. So try to understand why Google would spend the money to return an AI answer. Is that additional processing? And so it costs more. Why then would they serve an A answer when someone else's content has already provided a nearly identical answer? And why would they serve an A answer at all? Since there will be a cost-benefit analysis to determine whether the A answer is actually better for the user than simply serving the featured snippet as it is now, 
it may not be as comprehensive as we think. And if the answer is no, then why would they expend the money to generate that A answer? Yes, that is a fascinating point. Let's go back to the search query, which is the biggest mammal. This is a specific search, and the old Google was pretty good at answering it, typically with a featured snippet. We can see that the generative A answer has actually moved the featured snippet down the page a bit. This is a good answer with no complaints. However, you'll notice that the generative A answer also provides additional information and context. Most generative A answers on Google also include website links. It's a misconception that these are necessarily the websites the answers were taken from. They are websites that corroborate the generative A's answer. It provides the answer and then links to other websites that support that answer. We can click on the expand box and see individual websites that corroborate each statement in the generative A answer. It pushes down the organic search results further down the page. However, there are flaws in some generative A answers. Excessive duplication is one issue. The answer contains a lot of repetition and is not in any particular order. For instance, phrases like include your page's primary keyword in the title tag are repeated. Another issue is that the model lacks the concept of fact or truth. This can be problematic, especially for health-related questions. Google stated that answers would be restricted for your money or your life keywords, which include financial or health-related queries. Looking at software queries, a search for best CRM software generates generative A answers with options and descriptions. However, the criteria for recommendations are unclear. Regular search results with detailed information and reviews provide more context. In local listings, searches like Best Gelato in Santa Monica generate generative A answers with business recommendations, corroborated by sources like Yelp. Local listings offer similar information but provide additional details such as opening hours, reviews, and a map. In conclusion, the new search generative experience has potential, particularly for shopping-related queries. However, it's currently in its early stages, and user trust in generative A answers is uncertain due to a lack of transparency in recommendation criteria. As marketers, we need to adapt to this evolving landscape and focus on strategies to gain credibility and visibility in this new search environment. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel to see more.